Hello super user and welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to speed through and create a ton of macros using all these JW Lua scripts that you just downloaded. For instance, you may have realized that there's actually not just the fourth string harmonic script, there's actually several more. There's one to do string harmonic with touch threes. I use A and that is gonna be third. And then there's also ones that do it in fifth. I use D for that one and we're gonna call this fifth. And then there's also one more that takes string harmonics from dyads. So I call it dyads, I use F. And this one, I believe uh, it's from sounding pitch, but let's just double check it by going through the plugins this way. Yeah, interval, that's what this one is called. And that way you can see the difference between each of them. Let's just real quickly go make some string harmonics. So for instance, the fourth one is one that we've been using so far and that makes it a touch fourth harmonic. The third one makes it a touch three harmonic, and the fifth one makes it a touch fifth harmonic. All will release the same sounding note. In contrast, the one from the dyads takes any uh, possible string harmonic that would be from the form of the dyad. So these are the notes that are already in the form of a dyad, and it just makes the harmonic out of them. So this one doesn't start with the sounding pitch. Instead, it starts with the notes that they're actually going to play. So cool, now that we have that, let's create a bunch of harmonics for the different keys. And so let's first make sure that we can actually pull up the keys palette. So under orchestration, we're going to make a new macro called key change. I use the hotkey trigger S for this one. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna do show a macro group for one action. Which macro group? We want it to be the key signature macro group. And then over in the keys, we're gonna create a macro called C major. This is just gonna change the key to C major. The hot key I use for C major is C for C. New action, and this is gonna be a menu item. And then for menu item, it's menu, finale, plugins, JW Lua, key, of C. And then we can go through and create a bunch of more keys. So let's start with A major. I use A for this one and the key is going to be A. Now let's duplicate that macro and we're going to call this one A flat major and this one's going to be Z because Z is one less than A so A flat Z just makes sense to me. And this one's going to be the key of A flat and instead of flat we're using a B. And then we're gonna duplicate this macro and we're gonna call this one B major. I use the hot key B for B and the key of B. Duplicate this one and this is going to be B flat major. I use the hot key W for B flat major and it's gonna be B flat. Duplicate it and we already have C major so we're gonna to go to D major. And for D major I use a D and this is gonna be the key of D. Duplicate it, and this one's going to be D flat major. The hockey I use is X, and this is going to be D flat. Then we're going to duplicate the macro again, and this is going to be E major. I use the hockey E for E major, and this is going to be E major. Then duplicate it, this is going to be E flat major. I use the hockey trigger of Q for this one, and it's going to be E flat. Then duplicate it, and we're going to do F major. I use the hot key of F for F major and the key is F. And then duplicate it and we're almost done for F sharp major. I use the hot key R for F sharp because R is right above F so it makes sense to me. And we're going to do the key of F sharp. G major. And I use the hot key of G for G major and the key is again G. And then the last one is G flat major. And for this one, I use the hockey of V again because V is right below G and it's G flat major. And so cool, now we can quickly change to any key. In general, it's good practice in finale to not use minor keys because mixing minor and major keys can really mess things up. So we have all 12 keys and if you need to change it to a minor, you just change it to the relative major. Now let's quickly fill in the meters. And so there's gonna be a bunch of meters, but first we have to actually show the meter palette. 
So back up here in the orchestration, this is where I keep the meters. We're going to just duplicate this macro for key change and call it meter change. And for this I use A as the shortcut and the macro group is going to be meter. And we're going to do a very similar process for creating all the macro groups in meter. And so I'm actually just going to copy one of these keys. That way we have the starting baseline for over here. So we're going to change the name for this one, and we're going to start with 1, 2, and you'll see why. And this is going to be Q. If you are used to the meta keys with the time signature, so we have the time signature and we have the meta keys, like 3, 4, like that, you could use these hotkeys the same as the meta keys, uh, but personally, I change the hotkeys from what the meta keys are, just so that way everything can fit with my left hand. And so then instead of key, we're going to have, I believe it's meter 1 slash 2. But if you don't remember for sure, it's always good practice to go through the actual menu items like that. Cool. Let's just copy through all of these. And now for this one, we have 1, 4. And we're going to have a hotkey of 1. And it's 1, 4. Duplicate it. And we're going to put it as 2, 2. I use the hotkey of W. And this is going to be 2, 2. And we can duplicate it, and the next one's going to be 2, 4. For 2, 4, I use the hotkey of 2, and it's going to be 2, 4. Duplicate it, and this one's going to be 3, 2. And I use the hotkey of E for 3, 2. And we're just going to change this to 3, 2. Duplicate it, and this one's going to be 3, 4. I use the hotkey of 3 for 3, 4. And we're going to change this to 3, 4. And duplicate it again, and this one's going to be 3, 8. I use the hotkey of A and 3, 8. And duplicate it again. This is going to be 4, 2. I use the hotkey of R and it's going to be 4, 2. And then duplicate it again. And we're going to write in 4, 4. I use the hotkey of 4 for 4, 4. And it is 4, 4. And then duplicate it again. And it's going to be 5, 4. I use the hotkey of 5 for 5, 4. And you might start seeing a pattern here where 6 is going to be 6, 4. And so then we have 6 for 6, 4. And then now finally we have 7 for 7, 4. Where we have 7, and it's 7, 4. And we're almost done with the time signatures. Just have two more to go. We have 9, 8, which I use the hockey of D for, and the meter is 9, 8. And finally, we're at 12, 8. And I use the hockey of F for 12, 8. So cool. Now you can quickly and easily change between any meter and any key nice and quickly. Now you may have noticed that there is a, another category here called bar lines. And yes, we can create bar lines and this one's actually going to be a little bit more interesting and less repetitive than the other ones. But bar lines is going to be based off the finale M measure. And so let's just create a new macro to call the bar lines macro. So we're going to call this one bar lines, new trigger, and the hockey trigger is going to be C. And this one's just going to open a macro group for one action. The macro group in this case is going to be bar lines. And then back in the bar lines macro group, we're going to create a new macro. And these are going to be slightly different than the other ones. It's not going to be a straight menu command. So let's start off with the normal. This is going to be the normal bar line, the one that you usually use. And this one, we're going to have the hockey trigger of A. And we are going to start by running a menu command. And so we go over here to Finale, Plugins, JW Lua, and we're going to go over to Barline, Single. So as you might expect, if you run this macro through Keyboard Master, so that's Command M, C, and then A, it will make these all single bar lines. But this script also has this pop-up dialog box that just says OK. Now why is that? Well, it's because of the invisible bar line case. So if we have invisible bar lines, the bar lines are obviously invisible, but let's just real quickly put in four notes here. The invisible bar lines will still have a gap between the different bar lines. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, for that one, run a plugin called JW Conceal Bar Lines. So let's create the macro real quickly. We're going to call it invisible. And the hotkey trigger will be X. X like delete the bar lines. New action, and we're going to select a menu item, and this is going to be 
under the menu of Finale, Plugins, JW Plugins, and Concealed Bar Lines. And so now if we run that, it automatically deletes the space, which is really cool. The problem then is, if we go then do our normal bar lines, like that, we don't have the space we need. Luckily, there is another plugin called JW Revealed Bar Lines. And so if we go over to JW Reveal Bar Lines, it will automatically fix that space. Now here's the thing, we don't want to do that by hand, but we don't need to always run it. For instance, Conceal Bar Lines doesn't work on one measure. In fact, it'll give an error saying you must select at least two different measures. And so in order to prevent that error from also coming on Reveal Bar Lines, anytime you do a normal bar line and there's more than two measures, it gives up this dialog box. But if it's only one measure for the normal bar line, it doesn't. That just gets rid of the error, but that means we need to program that into this macro. So under normal, then under here we're going to have an if statement. That basically just says if we have this button, click the button. So add a condition and we're going to call it a button condition. And a button with the name of OK, lowercase k, is enabled. Then we're going to press a button and the button is going to be OK. And so cool, now if we do the normal bar lines, it automatically presses that button for us. And then after this, we could just call the reveal bar line script. So menu item, and menu, finale, plugins, JW plugins, JW reveal bar lines. Great, so now if we hide the bar lines, and then we want normal bar lines, it automatically does the plugin for us. Cool, and now the only last thing to take care of on invisible bar lines is that if we only have one measure and we do the invisible bar line, it'll give us this error, but we want to get rid of that error for us. So we can do a very similar thing of take this if statement, copy, move it over here. So if you have a button that says OK, and this time it has to be capital K, then just we're going to press it. So we're going to come over here to this if statement, copy it, bring it over to the invisible bar lines, paste it, and so that way if the button OK appears, we're just going to press it, and we can delete this extra menu command. So cool, now we've gotten rid of that menu, and so then if we want to do invisible bar lines, like that, and then normal bar lines, it'll work for us. So once we have that covered, now let's just quickly create the other bar lines. So we're going to duplicate normal bar line, and we're going to call this one dashed, fourth, and C. And this is just going to be dashed. And then we can duplicate this one and call double, hotkey of D. And this is going to be double. And we can duplicate the macro and call it final. And the hotkey of F and its bar lines, final. Then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to call it solid and have a hotkey of S for solid, and call it a solid bar line. And then finally, the last one is a tick. We're going to have E for tick, and call bar lines tick. And cool, cool, cool. So now finally, the last few JW Lewis scripts are going to be manipulations, and these are going to replace several of the functions from JW Staff Polyphony. That way you don't have to worry about even more complicated macros like we did for the dynamics. So there's six of them we're going to use right now. There may be more in the Dropbox by the time you watch this video, but for now there's six of them that we're going to add. So we're going to add a macro, and we're going to call this delete bottom note, and have a hotkey trigger of R. And again, we're going to have a menu action, menu, finale, plugins, JW Lua, and chord line delete bottom note. What this does is if you have a chord or even any dyad, even these harmonics work, and you run that macro, it just deletes the bottom one. Similarly, there's one that deletes the top note. So we can do delete the top note. And this one has a hotkey trigger of E, and it's delete the top note. Now there's two more actually that are called keep top note and keep bottom note. And these, as you might expect, instead of deleting them, delete all the notes but the top note. So for keep top note, I use Q, and we're going to call this keep top note. And then we're going to copy this 
and we're going to keep the bottom note like that. I use the hockey of W and it's keep the bottom note. So like if you have a big long chord like this and you only wanted to keep the top note, you can hit Q to keep the top note or you can hit uh, W to keep the bottom note or you can use R to delete the bottom note and lastly you can use E to delete the top note. The last two macros that we're going to put here are for rotating the chord. So rotate the chord up and for this one we're going to have F and I can tell you the Lewis script is called rotate chord up. And then last one is rotate chord down and I use D for down and rotate chord down. And so these actions look like if you want to rotate the chord up, it literally inverts it upwards and down does the same thing going back down. So that is several scripts that you're likely to use every single day. And I am often creating new scripts. So if you want to add in new JW Lewis scripts to your arsenal, just keep the Dropbox synced and you will get new scripts anytime I create a new one. And we're not quite done with Lua right yet, because as you know, there are several other Finale users and I that have been working on a really great tool that you can use called the Jetstream Finale Controller. And a huge part of that is actually a really long JW Lua file with a bunch of really, really cool scripts. There are literally hundreds of functions you can use and we keep adding more. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at that Lua file and see how you can use it to optimize your workflow even more, even if you don't have a stream deck. Can't wait to show you, so I will see you in the next lesson.